Okay, the first driver I want to go ahead and take you through is just a simple reach driver. We're going to use our upper body to go ahead and drive the movement while we're doing a lower body exercise. We've got the dynamic stabilizer placed across or above our knees. We're going to do just a simple lateral lunge, but with the reach. Now, what the reach is going to do is it's going to drive my right hip to have to rotate, which is going to engage my glute medius a little bit more aggressively versus just doing a simple lunge all right, to the side, not going to drive that, but as soon as you put the reach in, you immediately drive that hip to go ahead and work harder. Not only that, but because you're rotating, you're going to create some mobility through that right hip as well. So a simple reach allows you to engage all of that. It's possible because my hands are free, the band is attached around my knees, my hands are still free to go ahead and do what I want. Another attachment that's going to allow me to keep my hands free is the simple hip attachment. In this case, we're going to go ahead and do front squats using a dumbbell while we got a horizontal vector attached to our hip. So we've got a horizontal force drawing us to the right, which is going to engage my right side to have to work more aggressively. Meanwhile, I've got a vertical force vector performing with the dumbbell. Putting those two together, it's going to engage my right hip and stabilizers to really have to work hard to go ahead and perform more of a stability action on my right side. So again, two vectors, horizontal force vector, vertical vector, is going to really create some great hip reaction that you can't get with just the dumbbell itself. Again, we're going to go ahead and we're going to use a horizontal vector, but this time we're going to face the band attachment, which is going to create a forward horizontal vector versus a lateral horizontal vector. But in this case, we're going to go ahead and bring in a medicine ball to create a vertical vector force from the medicine ball. And then we're going to create a rotation that's now going to bring in the transverse plane. What I love about this sequence is, number one, I've got a horizontal force that's going to teach me how to handle the ground reaction forces, mostly a shear force. We've got the overloading of the medicine ball, so now I've got to really teach myself how to handle that vertical load. And then by bringing in the rotational force, it basically brings in that transverse plane, which we know is very important. Because we're rotating over the front leg, it's simulating exactly what happens at the hip when we go and do running motions. So again, a simple medicine ball rotational lunge is going to simulate exactly what happens when we go into a running motion. As you'll notice, right arm drives back. That drives my right hip just like the medicine ball. The band is driving the momentum forward, just like with running, and my body is creating the vertical load that happens with running. So again, you can apply that simple movement, but because our hands are free, we can go ahead and drive all three of those movements at one time. Here's a pretty cool way to go ahead and load the vertical vector with an ascending resistance. So now you've got to challenge the body to work through a full range of motion. Go ahead and use the crossover setup. Remember, you want to attach it onto the arch of your foot. Notice how easy it is to lock in. You want to make sure the band is sitting on the shoulders, not sitting on the neck, but sitting a little bit more laterally so it's right onto that collarbone area and very comfortable. Again, because it's flat bands, it makes it much easier to do. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to pick up the dumbbell. And we can do a lot of great things with this. We could go ahead and do a dumbbell deadlift, which again is going to engage our core but also engage our hips but because the band is hooked onto us we got to learn to push all the way through the range of motion which wouldn't happen if you just had the dumbbell by itself you could go ahead and do a overhead press so you're locking out overhead again you got to drive all the way through the range of motion so again by attaching the bands on using the crossover setup I load the entire kinetic chain and now I've got to learn how to drive, how to pull, how to do anything through a full vertical force or vertical motion. The crossover setup allows us to do that and once again our hands are free so we can do whatever we want with them while we're loading the entire body. Engaging hip extension is going to be a huge factor in allowing us to create greater force not only vertically all right, but also horizontally as well as pulling motions horizontally as well. So how can we facilitate that? Well, by hooking a band up 
to our hips in a horizontal force, it's going to go ahead and pull me into that nice hip hinge position. Because our hands are free, we can do all kinds of actions. We could go ahead and do a deadlift. We could go ahead and do a horizontal pull. Or we could take the band behind us, drop down, and do a horizontal push, which is going to cause us to go ahead and create a greater emphasis on the push, but it's going to be driven by increased hip action which is going to allow us to get more power through our upper body. So if you're trying to get more strength and more power through your upper body, adding a simple hinge action and making your hips have to really work by pushing through a force is going to then drive your upper body to go ahead and work harder. Once again, because my hands are free, I'm able to now go ahead and do some different things with them while I'm driving my hips. Keep in mind, that the whole time it's a full kinetic chain action, all right, and as a result that you're burning a lot more calories, you're working a lot harder, but you're teaching your body how to move as a unit.